Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to show you what is the fastest way I have ever encountered of painting Imperial Fists for the Horus Heresy. Although this would work just as easily on your Primaris Marines or anything of the like. This would be the basis for painting pretty much everything in the army. Now this is adapted more or less directly from the Forge World Army Painting Team's method, so if it works for them, I guarantee it's going to work for you. There are one or two suppliers. Um, in order to avoid mixing paints, I have used a couple of different manufacturers, but as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. So let's keep things nice and quick. Let's get started. Before we get to the painting, I want to talk really quickly about how I've primed this guy. You've probably come across this mentioned before. This is a method called Zenithal Highlighting, where we start by spraying in black and then applying a white or a light gray or something over the top. Now I've started by painting him black, spraying him black, and then spraying him from above with white. The idea being the white's going to settle on all the parts that the light would naturally reach and leave us with some grimdark shading in those shadows and recesses. Now this is much easier if you do have a, an airbrush, but you can get a fairly good result by using a rattle can. I've done them like this because I'm now going to apply a yellow primer over the top. I'm going to use demonic yellow from the army painter and it works much better over white. If you want to skip this stage, still prime it white first, because putting the yellow over the top is going to give you a much better result. Looks a little patchy now, but we're going to fix that up. So let's hit him with the yellow. Demonic yellow, you'll see, is quite light. Uh, it's very close to Flash Gets yellow. It doesn't have a lot of saturation. It's fairly pale. But once we shade it, we're going to get a little bit of that Imperial Fist's warmth back in there. And you see we have some shading left intact, from our Zenithal approach, so that's kind of cool. The first color we're going to paint on him though is going to depend on whether or not you've got one of these shoulder pads. Uh, if you're going to use transfers, and of course you can skip this bit, but with a little bit of Corax white, I'm just going to block in fairly messily the interior of the roundel. At the same time, I'm going to swap on down to a smaller brush and I will paint in his eyes with this too. That won't take a lot of effort, and the best thing is because it's white, if you make any mistakes, you can cover it over with some demonic yellow from the pot very quickly. We're going to move on now and start painting in the black areas, and anything that's going to be silver later. For this, I have Vallejo's flat black, and I think with a quick pass there, you can see exactly why. Uh, you can stick to a bad and black, but you're probably going to be doing two or three coats on some of these flatter areas, versus just jamming this on and letting it settle. If you were painting, for example, Mark IV Marines or Mark VI Marines, which have the little, what do you call them, the gaps in their armor, so you've got undersuit showing, you could paint this black, um, or you could instead use something like black gray or German gray. Again, Vallejo colors, but for exactly the same reason as I'm using this black here. When it comes to applying this black, the only thing you really need to be certain of is that things like the bolter casing, and the casing on his chainsaw, if he's got one, is nice and solid. Parts that are going to be silver later, don't worry too much, just thin your paint down a little bit more and run them over those areas. It will be fine. What I'm going to introduce you to now is our secret weapon. This is Vallejo Model Air Metallic Black, which is a mouthful, but I tell you what, it comes off of a brush just as easily. So load some of this up, and what we're going to do is paint in all of the trim that we want to be that metallic black. Now, Iron Warriors is a color which is close to this, but not quite as dark. Uh, although, why would you be using Iron Warriors on your Imperial Fists anyway, you heretic? But you can make this by mixing about half and half Abaddon Black and Lead Belcher. And yeah, it's up to you, of course, how much of this is this fancy black, but I think quite a lot of it looks quite good. So let's come back in a couple of seconds here. Now we are getting somewhere. That's going to look quite shiny on the camera here, but once we are finished shading and varnishing, it's going to look a lot more reasonable. And I think you'll see that little hint of shine is going to stop us from having to highlight it later if we don't want to. Now one thing I do want to touch on is the leather gear. Some of the armies I've seen painted will have this done in black, in which case black grey or whatever you're using for the undersuit will work quite well as a leather colour here. I have also seen some others paint them in a brown, because 
a little bit of warmth on what is otherwise quite a, a stark color scheme, I think is going to work quite nicely. So just a little bit of Mournfang brown. Um, any ammo pouches or similar, I'm just going to paint the straps here on his chainsword. And now any of the silver details that you painted black earlier, a little bit of lead belcher, will start those off really nicely. Now if you were to paint the lead belcher straight over yellow, you would still need to apply two coats. So doing a black first isn't really going to slow you down any. And there we have it, that is really all of the base coats done. Unless you've made any huge mistakes where you've splattered over a yellow area with a lot of metallic, don't worry about your tidy up. Like for example on his shoulder pads here, you'll see I haven't really got a perfect straight edge. But I'm not worried about that, our shade is going to take care of some of that. And remember we are painting for bulk infantry here, big tactical squads. So what I'm using, this was mentioned in a couple of the Horus Heresy Weekenders, and Marine Juice is the best name I can think of for it. It is equal parts Nuln Oil, Reichland Flesh Shade, and Lamian Medium, which gives us a slightly darker, slightly more red tone than Agrax Earthshade would, but without being as harsh, because that medium there is going to stop it spreading around. I am going to start applying this generously over the entire miniature. And I mean generously. Really work it into your recesses. Any big flat panels like on the top of his head, just move it away rather than letting it settle there. But otherwise we are going to drown this poor marine in marine juice. Really get it in there. Once you're done with that, you leave it for about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. And we'll see what we get. Now we've got a little warmth, we've got a little shading. That's not looking too bad at all. Imagine 20 of him all blocked up into a tactical squad. You're not going to do too badly. From here there are a couple of extra things that I do want to do. For example, you could just dot in a little bit of contrast into his eye sockets and, you know, paint those eyes. But I do want to add a little white both to the eyes and to his uh, badge there. But to show you what I mean by, you know, bulk infantry done very quickly like this, I'm going to throw just a little Sterland mud and a couple of dry brushes onto him just to give him a very simple base so we can see what he looks like in context. There is the magic that is a really simple base. Just a little bit of warmth down there, it allows you to add quite a bit to the miniature without muddying up your paint scheme. So let's go ahead, I'm going to touch up those last two details I mentioned, so his eyes and his shoulder pad. I have here some white scar. Now, I'm not going to do a huge amount on these, I just want to pick out some of the larger flat areas on his badge here. And with a little bit of white painted into the eye sockets too, just towards the center, you can grab some contrast, this is Blood Angel's red, and fill those in quite quickly, and get a neat semi-glowing effect. Now from here you could very easily varnish him, call him finished. But there's one last thing I want to do, because I know some of you are crazy about your battle damage on your Heresy Era Marines. So I've got a tiny wee bit of old sponge foam, um, pluck foam from a case will do, or from a blister pack. What I'm going to do is dab some of this into some German camo black brown, right? You can use Rhinox Hide just as effectively. Uh, once I have dabbed some of it off onto a bit of tissue paper, I'm just going to see what I leave behind. And let's start by dabbing on his knee pads here. Just a little bit of rough junk to suggest armor chipping. Now anywhere along flat edges, like on his uh, legs here, this is a good spot for this. Try not to go overboard with it, because you will very quickly make these guys look brown. But with a little bit of patience, just go around the whole model and just pick some areas where it's likely that he would see his armor getting battered and dinged around a bit. We're looking a little bit grimier without having lost the brightness of the yellow, which I quite like. Now, there's one final touch to this which you can add, which is a lighter yellow to sort of define some of the edges of those armor chips. Now for this what I'm going to use, this is Moon Dust from the Army Painter. You could as likely use uh, Dawn Yellow, you know, from Citadel, but I tend to find this is not quite as bright, and so it's a little more saturated too. What I've got is an old brush 
which doesn't really keep a very good point at all, but that's okay. I'm not looking to actually highlight these specs. What I'm doing is just dotting around the region that I've put down that chipping, just to make it look a little more three-dimensional. This is one which takes a bit of practice, but I would say it is worth having a play around, particularly when you've got your, you know, your minions to, to play with like this. But yeah, not very much of this at all. If you were wondering what I would use to highlight the yellow without doing the armor chipping anyway, I'd still turn to Moon Dust. It's a brilliant color, just a little more rich than Dawn Yellow, and I really like how it works, eh? Approach those chips from underneath them so it looks like it's catching the light, and I think you'll get a really neat effect very quickly. So there is one last thing where if you want to highlight it, you can. Uh, I'm going to show you how. This is not something I would even suggest doing ordinarily for your bulk infantry, but let's do it. So on a raggedy old brush, I've got a bit of Necron compound. I have made sure that there is very little of it left, and I'm just using a nasty old brush to do this. I'm going to very lightly dry brush the edge of any metallic details. Uh, I'm not going to bother with his trim, but his bolt gun too, I'm not too worried if I catch the edges of the metal on this, because I think that's going to look quite good. And once I'm finished with this, that's really the painting done. So I will pop a couple of tufts on his base to really finish him off, take him outside and give him a matte varnish. We'll see what he looks like when he's all finished. And there at last, our Imperial Fist Legionnaire is complete. And I mean it quite sincerely. If you do have a faster way of doing this, I am all ears. This is less than 30 minutes work on every Space Marine. So an army that's going to look like this, if you're batch painting them, it's going to be even quicker. My goodness, I would love to know a faster way. <laughs> so it's it's not an idle boast. I have I have not come up with or seen a quicker way of doing this to this kind of standard. It's not astonishing, but it is nicely finished, and I think an army of these guys on the table is going to look fantastic. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me buy more Space Marines. If you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.